the last few sessions we have uh, discussed some important aspects of raga. We have seen how each raga admits of certain swaras, so each raga is associated with some swaras and those swaras are treated with certain gamakas and the melodic expression, the melodic movement follows certain established phrases. That is how the raga is explored. Now, when we say that a composition is in Todi Ragam or it is in Shankarabharanam or that he sang or Alapana in Begada, what we mean is this that that composition or that Alapana had only those swaras with those kavakas and the exposition followed used the phrases, established phrases that uh, bring out that particular raga. That is what we mean by saying that a piece of music, whether a composition or an improvisational um, segment, when we say that this is in a certain raga, this is what we mean. It is much like what we mean by saying that, for instance, I am right now speaking in English or that a certain book is in English a particular language. The, the analogy between raga and language is um, has captured the imagination of many actually and many people have tried to explore this uh, the parallels between raga and language. Um, there are obvious limitations to the analogy but it is quite interesting to see in ho how many different aspects we can compare raga and uh, language. Now like uh, language, raga also has, we can say that ra raga has a vocabulary and we could say that that vocabulary is its swaras, the swaras in it and immediately we can see the limitation of the analogy that a language's vocabulary grows whereas uh, a raga's vocabulary if it is the swara it obviously cannot grow. And then you have gra grammar, you have grammatical rules, rules of composition in language. We have similar rules in, in the case of ragas. The one uh, glaring limitation of uh, this analogy between la raga and language is that a raga does not have meaning uh, or a phrase in a raga cannot have meaning the way language does. But there are scholars, there are musicologists who argue that in the case of raga we can speak of a different kind of meaning. But even so, um, we can, when we just talk of a certain raga, when we take a raga like Shankarabharanam or Begada or Kalyani, there are dozens of compositions in this raga and possibly hundreds. And if we were to think of alapana or other kinds of improvisation in the raga, there would have been thousands of such expositions of that raga. And each of them will be very similar to each other in certain, certain respects and yet they will never be identical. Now oh, that is the the power of raga that there is a framework, there are rules, there are bounds, there are limits and yet within these limits and within these bounds and while following all these rules there is still immense scope for creativity, immense scope for improvisation. There are some expectations or requirements of a raga. One is that um, a raga should have a minimum of five swaras. Less than five swaras uh, will probably, you know, we can quite imagine that 
the scope of uh, a raga with less fewer than five swaras the scope would be pretty limited the scope of creating melodic movements melodic patterns if the raga has less than five swaras that would be quite limited so it is uh, expected that for a group of swaras to possibly become a raga there has to be at least there have to be at least five swaras I mean, the question could be whether new ragas can be created and yes they, they can be and they are created all the time and um, when we think of that phenomenon the, and also when we look at the actually uh, extant the actually available ragas this is a fairly um, uh, commonplace expectation that a raga would have a minimum of five swaras but there are musical minds who like to test boundaries and uh, we have uh, Vidwan Bala Murli Krishna who almost as if to challenge this expectation that a raga should have five swaras he created this raga called Lavangi which has only four swaras Sari Madha and uh, he has even created a composition in this you can hear a rendition of this at this YouTube link another general expectation of a raga is that it should have either Pa or Ma one of the two notes it cannot skip both Pa and Ma and 99.9% .9 of ragas obey this and again we have challenges to this uh, expectation Muteya Bhagavadar created this raga called Niroshta Pa and Ma are both what are called labials they, they can be pronounced only with the, when the lips are brought together so even the ragas name Niroshta has no place for a uh, labial and this raga uh, has no it has neither panchama nor madhyama sariga dhanisa that is the uh, those are the swaras in this raga and again a rendition of a composition by Muttaya Bhagavadar can be found at this link it's uh, a rendition by the Priya sisters so there are uh, but even though we have these exceptions of ragas one or two ragas here and there less with, with lesser than five swaras or as far as I know only one raga which has neither panchama or madhyama by and large the rest of the ragas admit of at least five swaras and they would have either the pa or the ma so we have ancient ragas like Shankarabharanam and uh, Begada and Keda Ragaule on the one hand and we have newer creations like Lavangi and uh, Niroshta and many others even as we speak ragas are being created it is possible because if you think of a raga as um, essentially a, a melodic fabric with some notes and not some others then it is possible to think of, of a completely new melodic combination and uh, try to create a viable raga out of it and this sort of thing happens I mean it's not easy but it is very possible and um, as we will see later there was um, a rigorous system a rigorous method of generating scales that was put in place sometime in the uh, beginning from the 15th to the 17th century 18th century we had this this um, 
development in the Lakshana Grantha tradition where a system for generating scales was evolved. So when we have that it is, it is not a Herculean task to, to think of a completely new hitherto unknown combination of Swaras. A computer could do it. But what then is the difference between, um, what do we make of this music, of this tradition, Carnatic music, which on the one hand has ancient ragas and on the other hand has ragas that are being created ever anew. Is there a difference for, between a raga like Shankarabharanam and a raga like Niroshta or even a raga like um, Sunadevi Nodini which is also a complete, this is just a combination of Swaras and um, it was uh, handled by music, by composers like uh, Mysore Vas Devachar. Is there a difference? I would say there is a world of difference between a raga like Niroshta and a raga like Shankarabharanam and along with me many many musicians would say that there is a world of difference. Because a traditional raga like Shankarabharanam or Riti Gavle or Ananda Bhairavi, they have been handled over centuries by great musical minds and these ragas have a certain character. They have gained many dimensions and to engage with such ragas there is, there is so much, so many more dimensions to that musical endeavor. To try to sing a Shankarabharanam is a completely different deal from trying to sing a raga like Niroshta. Because in Shankara Bharanam you need to have grasped the raga swarupa, the, the phraseology, the gamakas. You need to have absorbed all the musical effort that has gone into this raga over these decades, over centuries. Whereas with a raga like Niroshta, it is just a combination of swaras and it is up to you to work uh, patterns out of this set of swaras. In fact, with a raga like Niroshta or Sunadi Vinodini, we will not even speak of a raga swarupa. They, there is no raga swarupa or raga bhava that is associated with such scalar ragas, what is called scalar. Scalar as in scale, the raga is just a scale of swaras. So this, these two types of ragas are a world apart, but both of them find place in contemporary Carnatic music. Though of course we have musicians who prefer one kind of ragas over the other and some musicians who are tolerant of both kinds of ragas. So today in the context of contemporary Carnatic music we can speak of broadly one kind of classifying ragas would be to talk of two kinds of ragas. One is uh, ragas like Shankara Bhairdam or Kedara Gaule or Shuruti with a long history of evolution. And the other would be ragas which are newfangled, new creations, which are nothing more than a combination of swaras and there is nothing more about their personality or form. There are no expectations regarding phraseology or even gamaka for that matter.